tight in here. At first they wanted me to back in. I said, no way, I'm not backing in. You can see the actual machine boring machine is that one that huge thing over there so this is our old parts so they told me hundred and five thousand no it's it's hundred thousand pounds right as I as I scaled yesterday the truck stop now when the fate when the fate thinks that you need more training she sends you in a in a place like this right so <laughs> I came from there right the guy says yeah just pull in door 5 all right door 5 good enough except that my address is 441 and I asked the guy I said why is the number on the building is 425 or 421 and so I thought I would be going into that building because I, I checked on Google Maps and actually it doesn't even have the name of this company anymore. It looks like they, they moved out. Now it's a different company, but they're still occupying part of the space. And on Google Maps, it says permanently closed, right? And so I was, you know, always stop before your turn right and so i thought okay i'm not going in here right i'm going somewhere there because that's the building and so i stopped over here probably my the front of my truck was where this hydrant is and then i called the guy they gave me a contact number and the guy says yeah you just go in here like check this out you go like this and it's not just 90 degrees it's probably 120 degrees and you have to and he says yeah just back in the door like I'm always kind of like perplexed what people don't know what this is I said I have a steerable booster and I realized something that when it when you tell people that you have a steerable booster you know that's like saying that you have a car with with uh, with the proper uh, steering wheel and the axle turns and the wheels turn right like they don't understand what <laughs> They, they think that I have some secret lever in my truck that I can just I can just back and I can turn you know that's what many people think like to me no but honestly like you ask somebody what do you think a steerable booster does when you're backing all right so it starts steering right okay so I turn the wheel let's say I want to go this way so I turn the wheel so this whole thing starts steering no, maybe in Europe somewhere where they have electric steering or maybe when I have a one million dollar trailer and there's a remote control and there's a guy walking next to me and he can steer, yeah, then you can steer. But typical booster, that's called the pivot point, pivoting point. And so yeah, I can block it like this, but I don't want to do it when I'm loaded because for this thing to, to, to drag on the pavement, you have to release the air, right? So you have to use these uh, top secret buttons over here. Pull to pump, uh, pull to dump. Yeah, pull to dump air. So this is now dumped in the same over there. All right, and then you dump this air here with this secret switch. And then you raise this. All right, and I see now it's still not properly like this has to be here this part has to be here so for that to happen I have to turn right and that's what I'm gonna attempt to do now just turn towards that bank of snow because I back like this in case somebody has to come inside because I was just folding my chains and, and timbers yeah so people don't understand it so the guy says yeah just back in the door I said I'm not backing I told your guy before hello I can back out empty so why don't I just drive in and then you unload me and then then I can block the access and I can back out oh they started running around okay except now I'm sitting here and I cannot back 
well maybe a couple of feet but it's still it's too sharp of a turn you know i would run my trailer on this and the snow here i would rip off my mud flaps anyway you see that in the distance that's 427 yeah so what i did is i had to go like this and there's a disco road and then follow this road to the left over there all the way to the next uh entrance to the freeway and then i jumped on that freeway because i couldn't find any other place where there's enough space i had to jump on the freeway go to the next exit and then you know take the take the uh, exit go over the bridge and turn back it's crazy but you know i don't wanna i don't wanna have any accidents imagine i drove 600 miles everything was cool except i got stuck in the snow right and the last thing i want to do is just hit some kind of a light pole somewhere here because it's all very tight this is like old part of uh well it used to be a tobico a tobico now it's all toronto but it's ugly see like who does it like this and one guy before me i saw the guy brought a container and he pulled in like this and then i see that he's backing out uh because uh the owner keep screaming at them close the door close the door it's cold so they don't want to they don't want to keep the door open you know they can't because the owner the new tenant starts you know giving them hell so anyway so i thought maybe i can put a camera somewhere but all these guys are coming and going somebody might steal my camera so i have to go this way so for now so that's what i meant you see and i have a jeep right i asked him guys can you unload the jeep the guy says yeah sure no problem uh we're just gonna lift it <laughs> and the space inside between this uh big door and the other one is pretty much one foot more than my whole rig right and i said guys um i'm not sure you understand for this to work for you to lift the jeep i have to drive away like where the heck am i driving away since you don't have space and the guy said oh but we're flipping this right well even to flip this i have to disconnect the jeep and you don't have any space so basically the only way uh to load the jeep is would be do this back out leave the trailer here then take the jeep drive in and they lift it they have all kinds of ceiling cranes in there right they lift it then i back out without the jeep hook up to the trailer go in there and they load but you know i just realized that uh chances are my next load i'm not i i'm not gonna need the jeep and so if i leave it on the deck yeah this is free right they do it for free but then my next load i'll have to find somebody to unload the jeep you know and uh, my my customer that keeps giving me those excavators i was just passing that spot on 401 i looked and the, the excavator is gone so there's no there's no easy way for me to unload the jeep and so i told these guys that forget it i'm gonna back out with the jeep and of course this is like you know operating a double tanker so you have to steer this i steer this you know wherever i want that to go this has to be in the opposite direction so like lots of fun so yeah basically i'm gonna take the jeep home and then i'm gonna park the trailer disconnect the jeep and park it in my second spot where i have the spot for the jeep anyway right and this way my next load i can just if i don't need the jeep i'll just hook up to the trailer because that's how i run now all the time with the long neck and the booster right like i mentioned in the previous video i need this I need this long neck in order to keep the balance because once I use the booster if I have a short neck it'll all the booster throws the weight forward so I need the long neck to compensate for that right and with the long neck everything is cool and also you know the long neck of course I need it for the Jeep right and so my loads are only of two two types either I'm just using uh just the trailer or i'm using the trailer and the jeep right so if i'm using the trailer i'll just keep the long neck like this and the booster and then if i need the jeep i go hook it up back under it and go get loaded 
right? If it's somewhere in Ontario, because my annual permit actually covers me for this length, I can drive empty like this. I don't need any permits I, because I already have an annual permit. I just need the signs. And you can see how much weight I had. So when this thing was loaded, this thing was somewhere here. So now I just have to start my PTO and drop it down. Because that's my maximum height. You see this? This position five. But this trailer is a monster. Check this out, right? 60 tons and 12 with a long neck, three plus one. 60 tons and 12 with a, with a long neck, two plus two. 60 tons and 12, straight quad, short neck. Short necks, three, 60 tons and 12. So no matter what configuration, even with a tandem, it's still 60 tons and 12. Like this frame is unbelievable. And I just did a quick preliminary, like a glimpse but i didn't see any cracks nothing broke because yeah that was a super concentrated weight but i'm happy that that's why i wanted to scale just for my own peace of mind yesterday because i wanted this piece to be lighter because you know it's only like nine feet long and it puts so much weight uh, on the deck so now when i when i knew that it was only hundred thousand pounds that's that's already better right all right, so the Jeep is on, the air is on. So now I just need to drop this and go like this. And I haven't decided yet. Either I go this way. Uh, if I go this way, then probably I can just, it's, it's safer. Or I just say to heck with it and I just drive and I back straight into the traffic, you know, because people need some fun. Probably somebody's driving with a dash cam, you know, they think, hey, what's anything exciting is going to happen? Oh, wow, 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 look at this. A 107 foot long rig is backing into my, my line, of, line of fire. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna put the camera on, on the head of Captain Drachev. And unfortunately, I'll have to do some head turning. <laughs> so if you guys get sick easily i strongly suggest you take the extra pill you know the one that the doctor prescribed for you all right hold on let me double check the angle because it's very tricky with this camera you know because sometimes then i do i do a video and then the camera shows only the steering wheel or it only shows the ceiling what the heck anyway here we go i gotta change the So we are 69 kilometers away from my from my parking yard. Okay, over here everything is cool. Yeah, but the angle the angle of this thing is crazy, man. somewhere here so this is position one that's good enough all right so now I still want to twist to the right so that stick drops down and for that to happen I have to go like this then like this I think
right, so now we're in a straight line. Oh yeah, I don't think I can make that turn. It's tricky with the, with the Jeep. keeps going it keeps going into that bank to jeep to go that way to push the trailer away from that bank on following the jeep like this is fun except the jeep doesn't want to turn and now my jeep wheels are on the As soon as the jeep starts going, I have to start chasing it, otherwise it goes too far. And now we go in the opposite direction. proper angle so now I just have to stop and wait for for my opening oh I can actually see all right because yeah it's at an angle like this this is cool hold on we'll just take a breather and regroup let's go reevaluate oh okay cool except uh, I have to be this way and because for me to turn this way I need space on the other side of the truck and there's a bank there you see this is not gonna work son of a gun 
well at least check this out you see this this went down properly so now basically now the trail is turning as if I have only a tandem Yeah, it would be so much easier to back in here. But I cannot do it, I don't think. Yeah, I see that bank. Right, and so right now the truck is going right in there. Yeah, I gotta bring the I gotta bring the rear closer here. This is this is too far. Yeah, like I said, right? So <laughs> sometimes you 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 do a delivery. And then you cannot get out. much closer to the building all right I just want to put the Jeep straight okay so now we're straight almost okay so now we're straight oh now it's easy now I just look at the fenders. I look at the fenders of my truck and then I look at the fenders of my Jeep and I try to make sure that they stay in a straight line. can start turning like this so the Jeep will push the rear see a truck okay hold on but now this is good this is good the Jeep is pushing the trailer that way oh that guy looks like he's uh... yeah he stopped I guess he wanted to let me go quite something but there's not that much traffic and I have flashing lights okay which way do I need to jeep to go hold on all right I need the jeep to go to the right
like uh, one famous guy said a man must know his limitations <laughs> I got stuck you know I was almost out and then I went like this and now I'm pretty much stuck uh, this is not pretty so I went inside I said guys okay I give up I said I cannot get out can you please uh, can you please uh, unhook my can you please help me do this so that's what we're gonna do I'm gonna drop the trailer and then I'm gonna drive in with a Jeep actually wait a second how am I gonna pull it out because I need to jerk it so it, it gets out from Oh, okay. I think I need to put it down. Hold on. Because, yeah, if I... If I hold my... Um, my brake, my hand brake, the Jeep will be... The, the brakes on the Jeep will apply as well. All right, so now now I'm gonna drop it. Because, yeah, then it's easy, right? Like to back out. <sighs> All right, so now the trail is on the ground. So now it should allow me to pull forward. That's what I wanted. So now we push it down into the ground until the front raises. Perfect. All right.
All right, this is it. Oh, I forgot to. Close down my camera. And I'll just put it in airplane mode. That's it. So yeah, this is my Jeep place for a spot. So now we just... And one thing that uh, happened See, that's what I do now. I just use a glove to put over the, the hydraulic connectors. And one thing that happened, remember that snow bank I was trying to avoid when I was backing with the Jeep? Guess what? After they loaded the Jeep, <laughs> I still managed to hit that snow bank with my right tire. And of course, it just ripped off the mud flap. I kind of like the look now. It's kind of like gangsta, you know. I might keep it like this, you know, because it's really, you know, particular, particular look. We have Kenworth on one side and kind of like screw this on the other side, you know, until I, uh, until I run into a cop that likes symmetry, you know. But you see on the, nobody says anything on the pusher axle, I just have this right and nobody ever says anything but of course it's in the middle right but here they want to see of course the mud flap there's a certain distance you want to be from the ground like this worked fine because i removed i had the hangers over here see these two holes and i removed them i never had any issues so basically now on on the way to my next load they'll just stop by a Stop by a shop and probably install two similar ones. You know, I really don't like. I see people all the time with two different mud flaps. You know, one one mud flap says TA, the other one says loves. It just doesn't look good. And so that's my trailer in the distance over there. Yeah, I. Unfortunately, I couldn't back out out of that place. It was, and I was already getting tired. I'm hungry, you know. I didn't eat anything. I, I only had coffee in the morning. I was just getting frustrated, and so I just went in. I said, "Okay, guys, I give up. Please uh, leave the jeep." And the guy who was operating that remote crane control, I don't know. It was real scary. Like the, the thing keep twisting. I said, why is it twisting? Why you cannot just lift it straight? It kept twisting. One side was going into the machine that I just brought. Another side was trying to get into my cab, into the back of my truck. I said, hey, you want me to disconnect and drop forward or something? Like I don't want you to hit the truck, you know? So yeah, I kept the long neck. I think now there's lots of place for the guy to back. That's good, so the Jeep is here. Yeah, you see, I on the Jeep, I used to have hangers in here. I got rid of them because they were too close to the trailer. And again, so far nobody said anything, so. Anyway. And my, uh, my 36 inch neck extension just gathers rust. I just want to check the other you see I lifted them yeah okay the other one is good see that's what you have to do when you go into snow you have to put the bungee cord like this and then then you don't rip off your your mud flaps all right my car is all covered in snow of course I moved the car the car was here yeah I like my trailer it's a super strong trailer imagine all that weight was sitting in the middle you know and there was snow here 
and I when I, I try to lift my my wiper here check this out and this has happened see I think I have to buy a new car now because usually they say you know rich people that <laughs> They change cars when it's time to change wipers. Man, I have to buy a wiper. All right, so today's what Tuesday, so it's too late. Uh, too late to send the paperwork. To okay, let me warm up. Let me warm up the car. All right, where's my? I say it does this sometimes. It's because it was in gear. Now I have to open the door, close the door. So now it's not in gear. Now we start again. And now you see this? Now the controls work. Okay, heated seat, heated steering wheel. All right. Basically, the car doesn't like it when you uh, when it's was sitting in gear and you just push the clutch and you start it. And the, for some reason, I don't know, the controls just. Uh, anyway, so it's today Tuesday, yeah. So uh, I still have to send my uh, proof of delivery to the to the broker, but it's it's on my computer. I just wanna go grab something to eat and then I'm gonna send him I told him I said uh, I'll send you the POD proof of delivery later today I'm gonna go grab some lunch it's 247 now and uh, then I send him the POD and go check my mail uh, my bank should send me something I've been waiting for some some news from my bank about that big government loan And uh, yeah, I have to send uh, that deductible. Remember that crane that had the oil leak, right? So I owe them uh, 5,000 bucks Canadian, which is my uh, deductible. And the insurance company paid, I think, 30,000. So, uh, Mr. Dretcher, please, please send us uh, Please send us the check for five thousand dollars, and uh, please be warned that your premiums next year might go up. <laughs> no kidding, right? Of course they will go up because they just paid. The, they just had the payment, so they're not happy with me just paying them five thousand, which is deductible. They'll try to collect at least part of what they paid by increasing my my premiums. Let's say I don't know by three hundred bucks a month. So at least that'll give them three grand a year next year. So we'll see. Uh, let them do what they want. And uh, yeah, and this load that I just brought, uh, I talked to the broker again when I said, you know, the load is delivered. He says, hey, if you're available, he says, uh, they're going to be shipping this down south into U.S. I said, yeah, sure. Give me a call. Except honestly, I'm not sure how to, I don't want to use the Jeep. So now I know the weight because he wants me to carry the same thing down into US. Uh, so now I know it's 100,000 pounds. Now imagine if I, if I don't use my Jeep, right? And I take off the long neck and I install that short neck and take off the booster, right? And just run close, tight quad. I know my empty weight is 60,000 pounds. 60 and 100 is 160. And with eight axles, that means that you must get a permit for 20,000 per axle, right? Which is not gonna work because it's, a, it's too tight. It's right on the edge of what you can get. And I know for sure Texas will only give me uh, 72,000 pounds on the quad. Uh, to get 80, you need to have a booster, right? And if you have a booster, you need a long neck. Uh, 